I'm considering solving this year's advent of code in C, or at least starting in C, and it's only four more weeks to go or one more month to go. And as a little warm up exercise, I thought it would be interesting to look at last year's advent of code puzzle from day one. So what exactly was given? We were given 10 numbers or 10 measurements. And the question was, how many of those measurements are larger than the previous measurement? So most of them are indeed larger. The only two exceptions are 200 is not larger than 210 and 260 is not larger than 269. Okay, so here is our const int array with these 10 numbers. And then we immediately jump into the function here. Maybe let's do that. First of all, let's see why can we even call this function. So the first parameter is a const int pointer. In declarations, the asterisk means I want to declare a pointer. But the first argument is not a pointer. It's a const int array instead with 10 elements. Um, yeah, but that magically works because every time a pointer is required, but you provide an array, the compiler will silently generate a pointer to the first element. You can see that here, p points to the first element of a being a zero. You don't have to write that yourself. The compiler will do that. It's called array to pointer decay. Okay, and the second parameter is also a pointer. And the second argument is already a pointer. <laughs> but in the process of computing this pointer, also array to pointer decay happens. So maybe let's start at the right here. So A is our array. The size of that array is 40 bytes. A is our array. The very first element of that array is a single int. And the size of a single int is 4 bytes. And if we then divide 40 bytes by 4 bytes, then of course we get 10. So that's a cute little trick to get the number of elements of an array. And then we add that 10 to that array. And here the compiler will insert another array to pointer decay. That gives us a pointer that is 10 more to the right. You can see that here um, the end pointer is 10 more to the right of A, which doesn't even point to a legal element. But the C standard explicitly allows to point one past the end. And that's a popular convention in C++. Pointer to the first element and pointer after the last element. Okay, then we initialize the result to zero. So far we haven't seen any measurement that was larger than the previous one. And then we initialize another pointer to P plus one. So that would be a pointer pointing one more to the right. You can see that here it points one more to the right. And at the address value level, you can see it's four more because the next int, of course, is at four bytes more to the right, if you will. So as a programmer, we perform the additions on the on the element level. But of course, in, in the machine, <laughs> we perform that in um, on the byte level. But you don't have to do the scaling yourself. The compiler does it because it knows the element type is a const int. OK, so then we check if q is less than and. This means visually, <laughs> does q point to an element to the left of where end points to end? You can clearly see visually, yes, this pointer is more to the left than this pointer. Um, that's why we enter the loop. And on the value level, you can see that 4 is less than 28, of course. right? That's all that happens here. So the comparison happens on the pointer level, not on the end level. OK, and now we compare DREF P with DREF Q. What does that mean? Um, here is our P. DREF P is A0. Here is our Q. DREF Q is A1. And we want to com compare those with less than. That means is 199 less than 200. So on the expression level, the asterisk means please follow the pointer to the pointy, follow this orange arrow, if you will. That's what the asterisk means in expressions. And we would expect this to be true. <laughs> but in C89 and C90, we get a 1 instead, because um, those old languages don't even have a Boolean type. 1 is true, and 0 is false. But that's quite convenient here, because we can then simply add this 1 to our 0. <laughs> and then we get a, a result so far of 1. 
Okay, and then we increment p and q by one on the on the element level, so they will be shifted by one on the element level, and on the value level, if you look at zero and four, they will be incremented by four to four and eight on the on the byte level. Okay, q is still to the left of end. Maybe let's fast forward to a more interesting example. Uh, that would be here. So now 210 is not less than 200. So ascending will for the first time be zero instead of one. And then adding the zero to three, of course, won't change the three. Okay, then the next one ascending will be one again. So the three uh, changes to a four. Then let's fast forward again. Uh, here's the next case where ascending flips to zero again. So the six doesn't change. And then for the last one, it flips to one again. And then the final result will be seven. Um, now, if we increment P and Q, then you can see Q is now at the end. So on the visual level, they point to the exact same element. And on the, on the um, value level here, you can see that both of them end in 28. So they, are, they contain the same pointer value, basically. Okay. So Q is not less than N, so we can leave the loop and return the result seven to the caller. Okay, so would you actually like to see me solve advent of code in C, or would you like to see a more high level language like Java or Kotlin, or would you like to see a repetition of closure, what I did two years ago? And maybe even more importantly, which language will you choose? <laughs>